Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. So quite a bit of news to go through today, recent happenings in the game. If you like videos like this, do me a favor, like and subscribe, would really appreciate it. So let's get started with stuff that's happening today. So Hardcore Season 4 just started today as of when I'm recording this, which is March 31st, 2021. So Season 4, there are a few new things, but not a lot new here. So the Hardcore Season goes through June 29th, so that's March 31st through June 29th, so that's the standard three months that they've stuck to. They've mentioned earlier this year that they might start to do shorter hardcore seasons, but as of now, for this season, they're doing the normal three months. It is called Might and Madness. That's the theme. It's a Zoriat theme, which really doesn't affect the hardcore league's function too much. It's just basically the theme in terms of the NPCs and such. That you see in the vendors and stuff like that. There are a couple changes, so no extra lives this time. There is no in the previous hardcore league, they had a thing where you could have a couple extra lives when you achieve certain mile like level milestones. They're not doing that this time. So this time, just if you die, you're dead. Period. One life only. So the rewards. Let's talk about the rewards. Now, I can't actually show you pictures of any of these. They SSG did not release any pictures, so you're not going to see pictures or previews of any of these prizes until someone in-game actually gets it and posts a screenshot. But here's what the rewards are. So 1750 favor, you get an overlord collar, which is a cosmetic helm. A favor, if you reach a reward of favor of 5,000, you get a Dalkir steed, which is a mount. When you get to 10 Reaper Enhancement points on Hardcore, you get a Death Walker's Cloak 4, so that's a cosmetic cloak. And then if you get to 20 Reaper points, you get a Thorak Pup uh, War Veterans Certificate. Uh, I would assume that just looks like a small Thorak Hound. So here's a picture of a Thorak Hound. It's like a devilish looking dog. That's my assumption. There's also another cloak, a Death Walker's Sash 4, which is awarded to anyone who reaches level 20. So... Basically, pretty standard hardcore season. The rewards are, of course, different as they are every season. The tiers, but though, are the same. So it's the same favor in Reaper Enhancement Point tiers. Personally, I don't plan to participate in this hardcore season as I haven't really in really since season what well, season one I think it was since I actually played a little bit. Uh, but if you do plan to play, may the RNG gods be in your favor, and I hope lag stays away from you. Okay, let's move on to other stuff. So update 49, we have some stuff coming in preview, but we also had some stuff hit today in patch 48.5. So that's again today, which is March 31st, they did a patch. The first thing is a mount stable, which is currently in game. So here's kind of a picture of it. This is a preview picture. I haven't logged in game yet today to see if it's any different, but here's a preview picture of it. But in any sense, the mount stable is changing the way that mounts are stored. So previously, up until today, mounts worked, basically you have to hold them in your inventory as an item. So now they're being changed to work like cosmetic pets. So you'll have a stable in each character. If you get a mount on one character, you're gonna have them on all characters. So they're gonna work just like cosmetic pets. And that's awesome because it will save you an inventory slot. At least one, maybe more if you carry multiple mounts. Now let's move on to the stuff that is currently in preview. The new adventure pack, which is coming out soon, it's in preview, so I would say probably, we never really know because they don't, they tend to not give us hard dates, but it's probably gonna be out in the next two, three weeks, I would say. And the adventure pack is called Perils of the Planar Eyes. It will include four new dungeons, and this is the Indiana Jones styled type pack that we heard about in the producer's letter. So I would expect there to be traps, rolling boulders, barrio sections, things like that. Just expect it to be very Indiana Jones-like. I have not played these yet on Lamania, but uh, I will. I plan on doing my normal review when it does come out to the live server. So you can be expecting that video. Now let's move on to the big changes. So the, the really big topic that's been going on in the preview right now and a major change that's coming to range builds. So they're doing a complete range pass in DDO and we don't know when this will be out probably probably around the same as time as the adventure pack so probably what probably two three four weeks somewhere in there so let's talk about these changes so the big changes are to bow combat 
specifically, you know, long bows and short bows, they're getting a lot of changes and getting an overall buff. So the goal the developers have for bows is to make them stronger, to make them more viable with other range options. Things in the past several years, so like like inquisitive, for example, like dual crossbows, things like that have been really more. They've really been leading the meta more so in terms of range builds than say like longbows and shortbows. And the developers want to remedy that, and that's a great idea. Obviously, I know a lot of people just thematically love bows. So while they're buffing bows overall, there are some aspects that they're scaling back, and we'll get to those in a bit. The design is changing a little bit. Essentially, the developers are taking some of the burst options and sprinkling them, particularly many shot, and sprinkling that more into just a general buff. So the, the range users here with bows and short bows are gonna see an overall solid buff, but some aspects, many shot in particular, is going to be scaled back as, as well as some, some particular name bows, which we'll talk about here in a minute. There is a really long Lamania preview thread, which I'll link below in the description, which gives you is just a total rundown. The developers made a long series of posts detailing every little nitty gritty change and design philosophy, explaining everything. If you want to, if you want to get the full context, then go there and read that. What I'm going to try to do is just give you the cliff notes. So here are the goals that developers have, and they are still juggling the math here. So I, I know there's been a lot of feedback on Lamania. Some people think they you know, have or haven't met their goals. So this is not, none of the number stuff is finalized, and as is everything on Lamania, the stuff I'm saying here could be uh, subject to change. But here are their listed goals um, for the past. So their goal, goal number one, add an animation set to bow combat that allows us to balance the bow combat style without incredibly high base attack bonus values that break the speed cap. So as part of this pass, they are doing a complete overhaul of the animation, They're making it a little bit faster. They want to two buff bow builds in heroic levels. They want to three buff bow builds in epic by retaining the existing maximum attack speed, but adding more power. Number four, they want to remove the combat styles over reliance on burst damage by eliminating many shot and adding most of that power back to both stats and other places. And number five, they want to diversify the number of viable builds that can use long bows and short bows. Six, they want to, uh, they don't want to significantly shift the role of strength or individual enhancement trees. They want to let the passes other features bring them all up together. So let's just get into, I, I guess, some of the highlights of all this discussion. They're doing new animations. It's slightly faster. It's significantly, it, what it ends up doing is giving you a significantly faster firing speed in heroics, but about the same speed in end game. They are number two, dexterity to damage is being added by default to long bows and short bows. Uh, number three, and this is some of their kind of big general overall buffs, is in a couple of feats. So the point blank shot feat now also grants, in addition to what it does currently, it now also grants, in addition to that, a plus one critical multiplier on a 19 to 20 dice roll. So that means 10% of the time you're going to get an additional plus one critical multiplier. So that's pretty cool. Uh, number four, combat archery feat now also grants a plus one critical threat range with longbows and shortbows. So that's just, these are just straight buffs on feats. And finally, combat archery's dexterity requirement is now 17 instead of 21. So those are some of the highlights there in terms of the general buffs. Now to get the full context, again, you need to read this post, but I'm just trying to give you the cliff notes, the more important parts. Okay, now on to the many shot discussion. So this is the major change that I, I think probably more players, some players aren't, aren't too happy with, but their goal here again is to take the kind of the burst damage and kind of sprinkle it out and give a general buff instead. Um, one of the problems with many shot is if you give range users this amazing burst ability, it makes it hard to buff them in other places because that of course is multiplied like a lot when you use the burst and it, and it causes balance concerns. So that's one of the other reasons they're changing many shots. So this is what they are doing with many shot. So mini shot is being taken out as it currently is and changed to an active attack. So it's no longer going to function as a temporary buff. It's going to be a, an attack, an active attack. So now it is, this is with the new description. Mini shot, bow attack, fire three arrows in quick, quick succession, plus one critical threat range and multiplier in each of these shot, 12 second cooldown. 
Passive, you gain double shot equal to your base attack bonus with longbows and short bows. All prerequisites remain the same. Rangers still get it at level six automatically. So many shot, no longer just this thing you can push to get a big double shot bonus for, I think it's what, 120, what is it, 20 seconds, I think? Um, that's being changed. Now it's just an active attack with a cooldown. It is a nerf to mini shot, but again, understand they had to do this so that they could buff rangers and uh, not rangers, but ranged users in other areas. And overall, for this pass, just keep in mind you're getting a big buff overall. That's their goal. And if they haven't met that goal, then they're going to tweak the numbers because they they know that ranged users, like longbows and shortbow users, are behind right now. So they're definitely you're definitely going to see a buff. So just keep that in mind, even if you aren't a fan of this mini shot change. Okay, the next thing that some players might not be too happy with is they are changing some existing longbows and shortbows with abnormally large critical threat bonuses. They are scaling them back for balance reasons. Here's the list on the screen. I'm not gonna read them all, but here's the list of the named bows that are affected. So if you're using one of these, just keep that in mind. But again, it's balance reasons and you're still gonna see a big buff overall. So don't, don't I wouldn't get too upset about that. Now there's still a lot of math in flux here. We don't know how this is how all this is going to turn out. It's a very complex pass. So if you are really into bows, which I'm personally not, uh, you know, I tend to play casters or melees. But if you're really into bows, definitely read through the thread. There's a lot of juicy stuff here and be looking forward to it. I would say this would probably hit in what two, three weeks since it's in preview one. I know they are doing they are doing another preview. As far as I know, possibly uh, possibly a third one after that. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the DDO news today. Please let me know if you have anything interesting to say in the comment section on any of this. Would be interested in reading that. That's going to be it for today. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good one. Take care.